Hello there everyone and welcome back to our virtual science classroom. This is your teacher, da, teacher Daryl Del Mundo. And today, we will discuss about quarter two, peak number four, part A. And before anything else, I just want to thank you for the short prayer that we had. And Miss Secretary, do not forget to check the attendance. How many boys and how many girls do we have for today? Okay, then send it to our group chat later on. So, our Science 7, Quarter 2, Week Number 4, Part A is all about cells. So here, we will talk about all about cells. So the study of cells is cytology. In this supplementary learning material, we will discuss and it is divided into two lessons, which are number one, parts and functions of plant cell and animal cells. For lesson number two, differences between plant and animal cells according to their presence or absence of certain organelles. So those are the two lessons that we are going to talk about today. So let's just have a short looking back. All we have to do is to identify the levels of biological organization as shown in the illustration. Choose your answers from the word bank. So this is our word bank. So we have atom, biosphere, cell, community, ecosystem, molecule, organ, organism, organ system, population, tissue. But in this case, we have the very tiny or minute thing that we call atom. So this is not starting with the biological. So when we are going to start with the biological levels of organization, it all started with cells. Okay? So atoms and molecules can be living things or non-living things. Okay? So number one, this is atom. Very good. Group of atoms is called molecules. So atom, molecules, it can be living things or non-living things. But when we are going to talk about living things, group of molecules for living things can produce or can compose a cell. So cell is the basic and structural and functional unit of life. Group of cells like this one in this example is tissue. So the group of cells is called tissue. And when tissues group together and perform a specific function, it is now an organ. Okay? An organ, when they are grouped together, it is now an organ system. In this case, our organ is skeleton. So this one, a bone. Okay? The organ system is a skeletal system. Am I clear? And then, organ system grouped together, that is now an organism. So, an elephant, this one is an organism. Ikaw. The plants, animals, and including humans are organisms. Okay? Group of organisms, as you can see, can make population. And group of population is what we all know as community. And where community is grouped together, it can form what? Ecosystem or the biomes. And different ecosystem group together. Yes, very good. Biosphere. So these are all the sequence of biological levels of organization. Let's start from atom, molecules. Again, atom and molecules, it can be living things or non-living things. Then Biological levels of organization starting from cell, the tissue, organ, organ system, organism, population, community, ecosystem, and then biosphere. Okay, so for lesson number one, parts and function of plant and animal cells. To start with, let us have a short introduction. So, trees in a forest, fish in a river, horse flies in a farm, lemurs in the jungle, weeds in a pond, worms in the soil, and all these plants and animals are made up of building blocks we called cells. Like these examples, many living things consist of vast numbers of cells working in concert with one another. 
other forms of life, however, are made of only a single cell. So when we are talking about single cell, ang tawag sa kanila are unicellular. Okay? Such as the many species of bacteria and protozoa. So ito yung mga example ng unicellular organisms. Bacteria, protozoa. So meaning to say, isang cell lang sila, pero they are considered as living thing. Okay? Then, whether living on their own or as part of a multicellular organism are usually too small to be seen without a light microscope. So, when we are talking about multicellular organism, these are all the organisms that has a lot of cells. Okay? For example, animals, plants. So, yun yung mga multicellular organisms kasi marami silang cells. Billions and trillions of cells. Okay? So, this is an example of the animal cell, and this is an example of a plant cell. Okay, let's proceed. All living things are made up of cells like plants and animals as well as human beings. So, they are made up of cells like what we have tackled a while ago. The cell is the smallest unit of a living thing or the basic building blocks of all living things. So, every living creature or every living thing is composed of trillions of cells except for the unicellular organisms, okay? They provide structure for the body, take in nutrients from the food that we eat, convert those nutrients into energy, and carry out specialized functions. Cells have many parts, each with a different function. Some of these parts called organelles. So, pag sinabi natin organelles, maliliit na organs, okay? Small organs or what we call organelles are specialized structures that perform certain tasks within the cell. Each organelle has its specific function and significantly contributes to different metabolic processes to maintain life. Napaka-importante niyan to maintain life. Okay? So, it is all working together to maintain life. Katulad ng story, right? Because cell is very important. It is not because of its size, it's tiny, it doesn't mean it's lesser important. Okay? So, it is small, it is has, or it has a very big role in an organism. Okay? So, do you know that cell has three basic parts? What are they? Yes. So we have three basic parts of the cell. So these are the following. So we have nucleus, plasma membrane, and cytoplasm. So this is the cytoplasm, the nucleus, and the cell membrane. The nucleus is the part of the cells easily seen under the light microscope. It is very important because it controls all the activities of the other parts that occur within the cell. The nucleus contains material that play a role in heredity. So, pag sinabi natin heredity, these are the things that we got from our parents. Ano yung mga nakuha natin sa mga magulang natin? Yung mga namana natin. Okay? Hindi pera, hindi kaya manan, kundi itsura, pag-uugali, and all. Okay? So, we will discuss this about these materials in later grade level. So basically, itong liquid na yan, a gel-like fluid around the cell or inside the cell is what we call cytoplasm. And then this one, the circular center of the cell is what we call nucleus. And then the covering is what we call cell membrane. The protoplasm can be found in the combination of cytoplasm and then the nucleus. Okay? So again, the three basic parts are cytoplasm, nucleus, and cell membrane. Do not forget about it. So another brief introduction for it. So this is an example of a plant cell. So the primary differences are plant cells need to perform two functions not performed by animal cells. Number one, produce their own food. Number two, support their own weight. So this account for the primary differences between plant and animal cells. Okay? So, we can say that this type of cell can be found in prokaryotes, 
or bacteria. Okay? Common ancestor, it can also be found in fungi, plants, and to the eukaryotes. So meaning to say, eukaryotes, they have true nucleus. Prokaryotes, they do not have true nucleus. Okay? So pag sinabi natin eukaryotes, under niyan ang fungi, animals, and plants. So plant cell has a true nucleus. So meron siyang totoong nucleus unlike ng mga prokaryotes or bacteria kasi ang bacteria wala silang true nucleus okay so we can see here that plant cell has cell wall membrane or cell membrane cytoplasm endoplasm ritopulum nucleus ribosomes mitochondria golgi bodies vacuole and chloroplast so those with the asterisk are unique to plant cells so cell wall and chloroplasts are unique to plant cells. Ibig sabihin, ang plant cells lang ang merong cell wall at may chloroplast. Okay? Cell wall for rigidity, para magkaroon sila ng shape, chloroplast for, you know what it is, photosynthesis. Next, we have animal cells under also eukaryotes. Eukaryotes, plant and animal cells are both eukaryotic cells, which means that the nucleus contain or the cell contain a nucleus. So, ibig sabihin may nuclear membrane siya. Yung kanyang heredity or yung genetic material nasa loob ng nucleus. Naka, para siyang nakabalot. Okay? Kasi ang bacteria hindi nakabalot yung genetic materials nila. Nakakalat lang doon sa cell. So, so they have many structures and functions in common. Compare this animal cell to the plant cell in the diagram below. So later on, I will show you the diagram. So we had the plant cell a while ago. Yung kanina, nakita niya, di ba, yung plant cell. This time is the animal cell. So the animal cell, like what we have said a while ago, it came from a common ancestor. And then it has two division, prokaryotes and eukaryotes. So again, prokaryotes, they do not have true nucleus eukaryotes which means they have true nucleus okay so we have here fungi animals and plants so animals obviously they have animal cells and, and animal cells contains or it is composed of membrane or cell membrane cytoplasm endoplasmic reticulum nucleus ribosomes centrioles mitochondria Golgi bodies and vacuole. Centrioles are unique to animal cells because centrioles are very important for the cell division. Okay, so let's proceed. Animal and plant cell organelles and functions. So inside the cell, a variety of specialized structures called organelles. Again, organelles carry out their functions for different cellular activities. So, we're going to refer to the table below. So, malalaman na natin kung anong function ng kada organelle na yan. So, we have here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 column. And each column, we can see the cell organelle name, the function, location, nickname, and their illustration. So, that you will be familiar what this organelle looks like. Okay, so number one, cell membrane, it is called semi-permeable. Semi-permeable, meaning to say selective. Hindi lahat pinapapasok, hindi lahat pinalalabas. So, the function of cell membrane is, it surrounds the entire cell, separates what is inside the cell from outside of it. It controls and regulates the movement of substances into and out of the cell. So location, it is around the cell. Nickname, gate of the cell or cell's gatekeeper. And this is what it looks like. Okay, it has double barrier. Kung makikita nyo, that's why it is semi-permeable. Next, we have cell wall. So cell wall class is a stiff material made of cellulose. So, kung may cell membrane na si plant cell, meron pang cell wall. And it gives shape to plants. So, kung mapapansin nyo, di ba may shape ang plants? It has like rigid shape, definite shape. 
So it is because of the cell wall. It can also be found around the cell. It is like the protector of the cell, plants only. And this is what it looks like. It's like another barrier. Next, we have cytoplasm. Cytoplasm is a gel-like substance where all other parts of the cell are located. It is located in the entire cell, the area of the movement. So this is the cytoplasm. This is the cytoplasm. It is a jelly-like structure or substance. Then we have the endoplasmic reticulum. Endoplasmic reticulum is divided into two. We have rough ER and then we have smooth ER. Rough endoplasmic reticulum, which attached with the ribosomes, transports proteins, while smooth endoplasmic reticulum with no ribosomes or sometimes not that many or it has few ribosomes, it is the site of lipid or fat synthesis. They are both located attached from the cell membrane to the nuclear membrane. Nuclear membrane, ito yung sinasabi ko kanina, yung nakabalot yung mga genetic materials natin. Yung nucleus, meron din siyang nuclear membrane. Meron din siyang covering. It is the transporter or the shipper of the cell. As you can see, it looks like a highway. So, para siyang daanan ng mga proteins or ng fats. Ayan yung tura niya. This is the rough ER. May mga dot-dot, right? Those are ribosomes. Smooth and the plasmic equilum, medyo smooth. Wala siyang dot-dot-dot, right? It's because of the ribosomes as well. It has not that no ribosome, but it has few ribosomes. Next, we have ribosome. It is a complex molecule made of ribosomal RNA molecules and proteins that form a factory for protein synthesis in cells. The protein builder or protein synthesizer, so tagagawa siya ng protein na sa loob ngayon, attach in the free or it is attached or they are free in the cytoplasm. So it is the protein manufacturer. So those are the ribosomes. Yung madiliit na bilog na may kita nyo doon. It can be attached in the endoplasmic reticulum or it can be freely found in the cytoplasm. Next, mitochondrion kapag isa. Mitochondria kapag marami. So mitochondria or mitochondrion is the powerhouse of the cell, meaning to say the cell converts energy in food usable through the cell through cellular respiration. So pag sinabi natin cellular respiration, this is for the cell to become alive. Okay, so meaning to say, ang mitochondrion, ito yung nagbibigay energy sa buong cell. Okay, so it can be found in the cytoplasm, the powerhouse of the cell. Kung baga, ito yung source ng electricity, ng energy ng cell. And it is very important. Next, we have Golgi body or Golgi apparatus. Sorts, modifies, packages, and distributes cell products from the endoplasmic reticulum. It is inside the cytoplasm. This is what we all know as the package counter of the cell. As you can see, para siyang main bag. Okay, and then right after niyang ma-package, it can be distributed with those small circles. Next, we have centrosome. Centrosome makes microtubules. And this can be found in the cytoplasm. Microtubule organizing center or MOTC. And this is what it looks like. Okay, they are very small, but they have bigger roles. Next, we have chromosomes. Chromosomes of heredity or hereditary traits, genes and directs of the activity of the cell. So, this can be found inside the nucleus. So, pag sinabi natin chromosomes, nandyan lahat sa chromosomes yung mga namamana natin. Yung genetic materials o yung genes na nanggaling sa parents natin, it can be from a mother or a father or it can be from just one parent. Okay? So basically, this can be found only in eukaryotic cell. And this is the director of the cell, carrier of hereditary traits. So this is what it looks like. Para siyang ribbon. So yan yung X. Okay? And then we have vacuole, vesicles in animals. 
So, membrane-bound storage for food, water, and minerals, and it is also the excretion of waste materials larger in plant cells. Sa animal cells, maliit lang to, parang vesicle lang. Pero kapag sa plant cells, this is the very big part. Okay? It's a big organelle in plant cells because, you know, plants need a lot of water. So, this can be found in the cytoplasm. So, this is the storage tank or the storage area. So, this is what it looks like. It can be food or water inside. Next, we have lysosome. Lysosome contains digestive enzymes, destroys bacteria. So, kung merong nakapasok na bacteria sa loob ng cell, lysosome will destroy that bacteria. So, this can be found in the cytoplasm. So, they are the waste disposal system of the cell. So, this is what it looks like. Mostly like circular structure as well. And then, we have centrioles. Centriole is made up of microtubules needed in cell division. So, centriole for cell division. In the cytoplasm, they are located and they are the nucleuses assistant para sa pag-divide ng cell. Okay, remember, cell can be divided. So, meaning to say, importante ang centrioles pagdating sa pag-divide ng cells. Okay, and this is what it looks like. Then, nucleus, it controls all the cell activities. This is the control center of the cell. And then, nucleolus, it makes ribosomes. It is located inside the nucleus. This is the nucleolus and this is the nucleus. So, nucleus or the nucleolus, both of them are considered as the brain of the cells. Then, we have nuclear membrane. Surrounds or cover the nucleus. Around the nucleus, they are located or it is located. It is considered as the gate of the nucleus. Next, we have chloroplast. Chloroplast contains chlorophyll where photosynthesis occurs. Meaning to say, nandyan nanggagaling yung green pigment or green color ng mga halaman. It's because of the chloroplast. And this is where photosynthesis happens. Remember, photosynthesis is the process where plants can make their own food. This is also located in the cytoplasm and these are the food producers of the plants. Next, we have cytoskeleton. Cytoskeleton, from the word itself, skeleton. Cells is structural framework. So this can be found in the cytoplasm, like maybe they are like bones and muscles of the cells. And this is what it looks like. See, it gives the cells structure. And now for our lesson number two, we will tackle about the differences between plant and animal cells. So meaning to say, ano yung mga nakikita lang sa plant cells at ano lang yung mga nakikita sa animal cells. Okay? So, this is the comparison and the contrast between plant and animal cells. So, using a Venn diagram, this part is the plant cell and this part is the animal cells. And at the middle of them, we can see both organelles in plant cells and animal cells. So, what are the organelles that can be found only in plant cells and another things that we can say that itong mga bagay na to sa plant cell lang siya nandun. Okay, so number one, cell wall. Number two, large vacuole, chloroplasts, and flagella only in gametes. So meaning to say flagella, ito yung parang buntot na makikita natin sa ibang animal cells then meron. So may mga plants din na may mga flagella pero bibihira. Okay? While on the other hand, we can say that animal cells had or have no cell wall. So, wala silang cell wall, cell membrane lang. It has a small or sometimes no vacuole and no chloroplasts. They have flagella. Okay, ito yun. Yung parang buntot, yung mga sperm cells, di ba? So, kailangan nila maglangoy. And also, they have the centrioles. And both Organelles can be found in animal cells and plant cells are mitochondrion, Golgi apparatus, rough and smooth endoplasmic reticulum, 
nucleus cytoplasm and ribosomes. This is if you're going to make use of Venn, di Venn diagram, okay? But if you're going to use a table, this is what it looks like. So we have structure, plant cells, and animal cells. Cell membrane, both yes. Cell wall, it has the plant cell and the animal cell, no. Mitochondrion, both yes. Chloroplast, yes in plant cell, no in animal cell. Nucleus, they have both nucleus. Vacuole, plant cells has a large vacuole. Animal cells sometimes no vacuole or small vacuole. Lysosome, there's no lysosome in plant cells. And there is a lysosome in animal cells. So those are the differences between plant and animal cell. And for your week number four, you need to answer the following again. Rewatch the video to review and as much as possible, answer only. Sagot lang ha, sagot lang. Answer all the questions in your modules in your Google Classroom. So makikita niyo yun doon sa notebook, picture na lang din. For lesson number one, do not forget to answer the pre-test. That is pages 3 to 4, then pages 9 to 11. While for lesson 2, answer pages 10 to 14, and also the post-test in pages 15 to 16. So, wag kakalimutan. Okay? So, answer this after our class so that you will be able to make a lot of tasks. And then, if you have any questions or if you want some clarifications, and some reminders and all the things that are important, you can reach me through my YouTube channel. Usually, dito kayo nagko-comment ng name sa gradient section, right? Then, kapag hindi kayo talaga sa group chat or sa messenger, sa Instagram, and then my Facebook account and my Facebook page. So, pwede kayo dyan mag-connect sa akin. Pero, as much as possible, dun tayo sa group chat natin para alam lahat ng classmates niya, okay? And that's the end for week number four, part A. Kasi meron pa tayong part B. That is the differences or the cytology of plant cell and animal cells. So this is your teacher, Daryl Del Mundo. Have a nice day and I'm signing out. So, God bless you all. Bye everyone.